Hello, everyone. First, thank you, Bernie, for this invitation to share my thoughts with all of you today. My name is Brooke Ellison, and it was 13 years ago that I received the Inspiration Award at the 2008 World Stem Cell Summit. And I received this award for my advocacy and activism in this field, advocacy and activism that I took on really for no other reason than to champion and pave the way for a field of science that I saw and continue to see as a very mechanism of hope, an opportunity for so many, myself included. I fought and continue to fight for this research because I know that it's right and I know that it's powerful. I know that it has the potential to revolutionize not only medicine, but people's lives in a way that we never really fully experienced before. Stem cell research and its advancement are causes that I've chosen to dedicate my life to, to lend my voice to the pursuit of cures and treatment for the very diseases and conditions that have ravaged humanity for so long. 2008, 13 years ago, was quite some time ago for sure. And in these 13 years, I've built my academic, avocational and professional careers around the advancement of stem cell science and regenerative medicine. Concurrent with my 2008 award, I created a nonprofit organization, the Brooke Ellison Project, designed to provide education to people from all backgrounds about the stem cell research to alleviate concerns and change misunderstandings. And through this work, I produced a documentary called Hope Deferred, which interwove the fundamentals of the science into a series of stories about the lives of people who might benefit from this work. And I've been fortunate to work on the public policy surrounding the science when I served on the Ethics Committee of the Empire State Stem Cell Board, helping to create one of the most progressive and science-friendly regulatory environments in the world within which this research could advance. And the, be the benefits of this policy have been nearly immeasurable, with breakthroughs happening here in New York at times when they were needed the most. I served as the Director of Education and Ethics of the Stony Brook University Stem Cell Facility after having gotten my PhD from Stony Brook in the Sociology of Science and Science Ethics and writing my PhD dissertation on the societal influences on stem cell policy or in countries all around the world. Helping to advance this science and helping to mitigate obstacles that might be in its path was my goal itself. I never needed anything more than seeing the promise of this research come to fruition and in so doing the manifestation of hope for so many. Yet my involvement in this field has generated attention above that in ways that I never would have anticipated or even would have wanted. In 2011, I was presented with an honorary degree from Rutgers University for my work in this field. In 2014, I was chosen by the World Economic Forum to serve as a young global leader for my work. And this was followed by my selection as a national finalist for a White House fellowship and ultimate selection as a Truman National Security Project political partner as a result of my involvement in the policy creation needed to support this work. And most recently, just last year, I was awarded the Stem Cell Hero Award from the New York Stem Cell Foundation. And these were outcomes and significant ones at that, but entirely separate from what brought me into the field to begin with. It was the hope in this field that was my motivator. It was the faces of people who could benefit from it that was my motivator. It was the promise of a stronger and brighter future that was my motivator. 2008, 13 years ago was quite some time ago, yes. But in many ways, the climate we're in right now and the challenges we're facing as a global community is very reminiscent of 2008 as well as the preceding years that drove my involvement into science advocacy. Much like what we experienced in the early 2000s, right now, we as a, as a country and as a world are facing a frightening intersection of a tremendous need for science and science advancement, as well as a skepticism over the veracity and significance of science. Over these past few years, the authority and expertise that we have traditionally ascribed to science has been eroded, 
despite the fact that it's through the vision and pursuit of science that we've begun to reemerge from the biggest public health crisis in over 100 years. And that divide, that gap between the need for science and the value that we ascribe to it, to it is where I would see lies. That was a bridge that I hoped to create in 2008. And that's the bridge that we need right now. And that takes all of us. That takes every one of us who cares about science to speak on behalf of its importance, its value, its immeasurable role in our lives. The recipients of this year's awards are the embodiment of that. And we all need to follow their leadership. I've always considered myself, considered it to be an honor to be involved in the advancement of science in general and in this field in particular. And it's just as big an honor to fight alongside all of you. So congratulations to all of this year's honorees and thank you for reminding us all that we all have a role to play in helping to shape the future. Enjoy the rest of the summit, everyone.